another type of uh, hydrocarbon nomenclature that we need to be uh, responsible for understanding is when we talk about cyclical hydrocarbons. And the, the fact that it has the prefix sickle, cyclo, and makes up being a circle, these are hydrocarbons that tend to form some type of a ring. <clears throat> so what the ring can be square shaped or it can be um, any shape really, but the longest continuous train, uh, a string of carbons essentially has to form some type of closed structure. And that closed structure is what makes it have the ring. And naming them is very, very simple. We're, we're doing the exact same thing that we've been doing in the past. You count the longest, in this case, continuous ring of carbon. Uh, you identify the prefix that would be associated with that longest continuous ring. And then you look for branches and name it as such. So here's examples. Um, here's one that has a, a ring. And if I'm going to start, I'm going to try to identify the, the ring here itself, which in this case is going to be that. So there's my ring. Um, I'm going to number my carbons. Uh, and the, I don't see any branches, so it kind of doesn't matter where I start. I usually start at the top if that's the case. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's six carbons long. There's all single bonds, so I know that it's an ane. And it's because it's six carbons long, it's a hex ane. And um, the fact that it does not have any branches on it means I don't have to worry about the branches. So I'm simply going to go ahead and now add the, the last thing, which in this case is a prefix for cyclo. So it's cyclohexane. Um, this structure could also be written like this. Um, the program that I used to draw uh, this particular structure, for some reason, decided to do it this way. Um, but there it is. So <clears throat> that is the cyclical hydrocarbon that we would call cyclohexane. Um, another type of cyclical hydrocarbon that we can draw is going from the name. So this would be, we're going to draw 135-cyclohexatriene. Now the E and E tells me there is a double bond. The tri tells me something really important. It tells me the location of these three trip of these three double bonds or it tells me that there's three of them which I get that is kind of redundant but um, it but these numbers out in front tell me that there's three of them hexa gives me the fact that there is a six carbon long chain and then cyclo tells me that it is some type of carbon ring <clears throat> so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my carbons and I am going to draw them draw the six of them as some type of a ring so one two, three, four, five, six. And because it's my chain and my drawing, I'm gonna number them. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start creating bonds. So one, two, five, six bonds. Um, and then I have to remember that there's double bonds and that there happens to be three of them and they happen to occur between the one, the three, and the five carbon. So it's the one, the three and the five carbon. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is go back and I'm gonna add hydrogens so that every carbon has four bonds. So H, 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 H. 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 So that, that's essentially the structure. It could be redrawn like this. That is basically the same thing. Okay, um, but it's one three five cyclohexatriene because it made some type of a ring. Um, this structure happens to have a very special name. That special name is benzene, and that's a pretty common compound. But in our uh, in in um, our class or the scope of our class, you'll hear benzene pop up every once in a while. So the homework for this one is the cyclical hydrocarbon worksheet, um, and we'll work through functional groups later.